I'm Good. How are you, Dr. Wong? Um, I'm Mariah. I'm calling from the Houston area. My dog is Marlin. He's a three-year-old French bulldog. You said and Marlin? Marlin, yes, sir. Awesome. And um, my question is: so he was diagnosed with IVDD by his general vet, and the vet said to keep him on crate rest for two weeks and expect to see forty percent improvement in those two weeks. And overnight, I saw a hundred percent improvement. So I'm wondering if it's common for these dogs to be misdiagnosed by general vets. So I guess what symptoms was he showing that caused you to go into your vet? He fell off the bed and it was about four in the morning and he was experiencing some severe pain. He was just shaking and panting. He was just, we could tell he was really in pain. And so we took him in and they gave him some pain medicines that was on Wednesday. And it seemed like overnight he got worse. They said that he should improve with the pain meds because they were really strong. Or they said that they were semi-strong. And it seemed okay. like overnight he got worse and like the medicine just wasn't doing anything for him. So I took him back in on Thursday and um, they said they gave him two injections. They gave him a muscle relaxer and a steroid injection. And then they sent us home with muscle relaxer, steroids and trazodone for the crate rest. Okay. And um, he, he seemed to improve overnight so and he's back to 100 percent at this point as far as you can yeah he's 100 percent normal and this Great. was a week ago well we, we like to say that's a good problem to have is when when they're they're better and we don't know why as long as they're better based on his symptoms intervertebral disc disease is certainly possible i mean so, sort of falling off something panting shaking not wanting to move all are possible symptoms of intervertebral disc disease but other things can do that. You know, you sprain your ankle, you twist your shoulder, or you, you know, hurt your hip, can all cause a dog to be painful and not want to be as active. So sure, could it be a non-neurological problem that happened? You know, he fell off the bed and he hurt his leg or something like that. Sure. Um, when a dog is showing symptoms of, of pain, again, it can be non-neurological or it can be neurological. It's easier for us to say that it's something like a slipped disc when it's classic stuff, like they're dragging a limb or holding their head low or they can't walk. But when it's more mild, like what you're, like what you're describing, where we're just uncomfortable, panting, not wanting to move, there are other things it can be. For what it's worth, just because it's so common in French Bulldogs to get intervertebral disc disease, that needs to be highest on our worry list. Uh, and, and the reality is we're going to treat him the same, whether it was his hip that was hurt or whether it was his back that was hurt. We're going to give him those pain medications um, on an emergent basis, and we're going to say, well, let's take it easy. So I'm, I'm sure your concern from there is, well, gosh, well, what does this mean for him in the future? And the reality is without a crystal ball or a time machine, we, we don't know what the future holds for him. Um, so I guess in summary, it could have been a slipped disc. Um, to answer your, your question, can it get better overnight? Yeah, we see dogs that never get better without surgery. We see dogs that get better over weeks um, with medications. We see dogs that get better overnight. It tends to be those dogs that were more mildly affected like Marlin, where it's just symptoms of pain, panting, not wanting to move. So those tend to uh, get better faster. I guess what what should you be doing? And again, one follow your veterinarian who's been able to evaluate Marlin. But it certainly sounds like a good plan of, you know, the medications. Are, is he still getting medications, or you're completely done with them at this point? Um, I took him off of them. Whenever I noticed him feeling so much better, I was like, well, let's see how he does without the medication. Is that not something I should have done? Um, it, it, it depends. I, I mean, the reality is we're a week out and he's doing well. So obviously what you did, you know, was not a detriment to him. Certain medications, we don't like to take away cold turkey, like steroids. If a dog's on steroids long term, we usually like to decrease those slowly just because the body gets used to having steroids as a pill that the body doesn't, um, the body doesn't produce as much on their own. So Medications like prednisone or steroids, yeah, those are ones that we like to sort of take off slowly. Usually my approach for a dog that I've put on pain medications for, for pain is while they're resting, I start sort of decreasing one of them 
and then decreasing the other. So I, I like to take it away slowly and sort of test the waters to make sure that, you know, th they're not still painful. Um, yeah. But being where you're at right now that you, you stop them, it's a week later, perfectly reasonable to, um, to, to, to not start them up just because we didn't take them off slowly. Um, with regards to, to rest, are, are you still crate resting him right now? I am doing my best. Mm -hmm. um, he screams like a seagull if I leave him in his crate and he can see me. Um, I bought like a playpen thing because a lot of people in a group yeah. that I joined said that that was the best thing to do. Yeah. And um, he jumped out of it. So I was like, this is counterproductive. Um, T totally. So in, in general, whenever we're worried about it being a disc problem, which again, we haven't proven with Marlon, but it's a fair, fair bet. And it's better to err on the side of suspecting that it is than and, and resting him than thinking that it's not and just letting him run around. So, uh, um, as tough as it sounds, as mean as it sounds, yeah, we're usually recommending like four weeks of crate rest and then we gradually increase from there. My, my recipes, four weeks of cage rest, followed by four weeks of small room rest, followed by four weeks of one level of the house. And for those 12 weeks, my patients are just going outside on a leash to do their business and then right back in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so in the real world, yes, it becomes very tough. You know, when my dog can see me, um, he feels better. He wants to run. He wants to play. He... You know, most people don't have the common sense to take it easy when they've hurt their back or their knee or their shoulder. Um, you know, d dogs, when they're feeling better, they want to run. But over and over, I see it where dogs are getting better and we let them do too much too soon. And that little disc bulge turns into a big disc bulge. And instead of it being mild symptoms, it becomes dramatic symptoms. As much as you can, I would continue to try and limit his activity. But what I, what I set up my, my pet parents for is use your judgment. If he's climbing out of the pen or if he's breaking his teeth on the, on, on the bars of a, a cage, you know, we, we adapt. But in general, we should be limiting his activity. So if the crate isn't working and we try the playpen and that isn't working, you know, do we go to the smallest room that, that we can give him? Um, you know, sometimes a, a bathroom or a laundry room or something like that. And it might be a little bit faster than we would like, but like you had said, it's not doing him any good if he's climbing out of stuff. So, yeah. um, so do you, have, do you have other questions? I don't think so. My, my question was just about the possibility of a misdiagnosis and I feel like you've covered all the bases and you're really thorough and I appreciate that. Yeah. The, so um, now if, if you had told me a different history that it wasn't something like he fell off the bed and you told me, you know, hey, he's showing signs of back pain. Yes, there are lots of other things that we see that can cause symptoms of back pain that can get better when we give dogs pain medications and especially when we give them steroids. So French bulldogs do get things like meningitis and that can cause the exact same symptoms of pain, difficulty walking, dragging the rear limbs, um, actually, just yesterday, we diagnosed a French bulldog that we were sure was going to have a slipped disc, and it had meningitis. Um, occasionally, we'll see disc infections, what we call discospondylitis, that can cause back pain. Um, sometimes Frenchies, they get misshapen bones, and, or what we call congenital malformations, and that can cause difficulty walking or pain. Um, Sometimes older Frenchies will get tumors or even sort of young adult Frenchies will get tumors and that can cause the exact same symptoms. So one of the common things that I see in, and, and I'm in the same you know, French Bulldog uh, IBDD group that you're in, um, and, and one of the common things that we, that we see, not just in that group, but in all the groups I'm in, is the assumption that it's an intervertebral disc herniation. And we don't know that until we've done tests. Sure, you can make an assumption. That's the most common thing we see in French bulldogs. You know, we it happened right after falling. Um, it got better quickly. So, I don't bring these things up to to bring you know alarm or scare you. I don't think you should be doing anything different than what you are. Um, but 
if Marlon's not getting better, if symptoms are coming back, you know, we need to keep an open mind. Is it not a slip disc? Are there other things it can be? Absolutely. But gut, gut feel is Marlon hurt something when he fell, most likely a, a, a bulging disc. And your plan of rest and medications, now we're off medications, but, but strict, strict rest is the best thing as long as he's getting better. Um, if he's not getting better, that's when you should be calling your vet, you know, for to switch to plan B. All right, perfect. I appreciate it. You got it. Thank you so much. Of course. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, Ashley, can you hear me? Hi, how are you? Hello. Hello. How are you? Dr. Wong, Michael, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you driving at the same time? Yeah, but it's okay. I'll be there in like six minutes. Okay. I'm just teasing you. Uh, what, what, what's your question? What's your What's your dog's name? What's going on? And and what's your question? So, her name is Dutchie. She's Dutchie. uh yeah. She just turned five. She's a French bulldog. Uh, she just got diagnosed with a brain tumor. So she just finished radiation. She's two weeks out of it. Um, but I, I was wondering about like about uh like she looks very bloated. I want to say. Um, like, I know weight gain is a side effect of uh, prednisone. Yeah. But it, she's only been on it for two months, and she's, like, she's swollen around, like, the neck area and, you know, the belly area. Like, I don't I don't know if, it, if that's common or I was doing some research. They said it could be Cushing's. I don't know how likely that is or. So, so what were her original symptoms um, that, that – prompted you to go to the veterinarian and, and how did she get diagnosed with the brain tumor? She had cluster seizures and then she went for an MRI. Okay, so she had seizures. And and I assume it's it's like a a, a glioma, is that what they're they're concerned at? Uh, they originally thought it was a florid plexus tumor and then they switched it to gliomas, but they have no idea apparently. Yeah, I mean, the reality, it's, it's tough sometimes with, without a biopsy, you can never know for sure. And certain tumors, uh, certain, certainly overlap with what tumors can look like on a So, um, with, with regards to the, the bloating and, you know, her being really swollen, I'm, I'm almost certainly at the prednisone. Um, I was kind of asking about what she went in for. Um, just in case it was something like a pituitary tumor or something like that, that would be something that could maybe change uh, her appearance. Um, but since it sounds like it's not a pituitary tumor, and it sounds like it's more like a glioma. Now, yeah, could it be swelling uh, from the radiation that's hitting uh, that spot, or? I, I, I highly doubt it. So uh, again, the, the, the likely thing is that this is all prednisone. Prednisone, it, as you've experienced, it causes dogs to drink a lot. It causes dogs to pee a lot. It causes their appetite to increase, but it also just causes sort of redistribution of, of the body fat. So many times, you know, that their, their face will look big, their belly will yeah. look big. I would venture to say that the most likely thing is that it's due to the prednisone. Um, Obviously, ask your neurologist, ask your oncologist, ask your veterinarian. Um, but they all said the same thing. But I'm like one of those crazy freaks who gets like third, fourth, fifth. I was talking to you know uh, vets from all over the world, trying to drive her to Minnesota from New Jersey. And yeah. So. Yeah. So the, the the likelihood is that it's steroid related. Um, many times that improves as we decrease the prednisone. It's it's not like when we decrease from here to here, that immediately the face or the belly is gonna look less swollen from here to here, just like that. But mm -hmm. as they decrease the prednisone, symptoms of drinking more, peeing more, panting more, weight gain, et cetera, should all start improving. Um, but the rationale is the benefit of prednisone right now is outweighing the, the downsides of, of prednisone or the side effects. Gotcha. Right, so that's all normal. How, in your experience, how are these gliomas? Are are they really that fast? She's been really good, actually. Knock on wood, she has had. She's only had them three seizures prior to the um, diagnosis. After that, she had nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, even 
So one right now, we're without a biopsy, you know, no one can be 100% sure, but the likelihood just based on her age, her breed, and you know, that's what your oncologist and radiologist and neurologist have, have all um, thought it was. So it's most likely a glioma. Yeah. Even within the diagnosis of glioma, there are slow growing ones and there are faster growing ones. So it's impossible for one dog, for, for anyone um, to say, well, gosh, what's what's her prognosis you know some dogs i've got dogs that i've diagnosed with gliomas that you know live over a year with just prednisone um but not all of them so that that was an example of outliers um yeah. I said, sort of the prognosis that you've been given was sort of without radiation it was going to be more like three to six months and with radiation maybe 18 months is that similar numbers yeah. to what your oncologist and neurologist said so um but but those are just statistics so we have dogs that live longer than that number and we have dogs that live shorter than that number so it's impossible to predict for one particular dog what's going to happen a lot of it depends on is it a fast growing glioma or a slow growing glioma um where exactly is it located so even small ones if they um, block off the fluid production or the, excuse me, the flow of fluid through the brain that can cause symptoms to get worse sometimes. Um, That's the, what I'm scared of because it hers is in the ventricle. Yeah, that, that can be sort of a double-edged sword. So sometimes as they grow into the ventricle, there's actually more space for them to grow into, but sometimes it can block off where it flows out of the ventricle in out of the lateral ventricle into say the the third ventricle or from the third into the fourth just where the the fluid sort of uh comes down into a, a more narrowed place if it blocks that off yes symptoms can get worse relatively quickly so um, oh boy. yeah I, I mean I, I i wouldn't take anything i said as as an oh boy i mean um i'm speaking generally yeah. Does mean that that's what's going to happen with your pup. So, how do you feel about um, CBD slash THC oil? Yeah, fair, fair question. Um, and and, and common question. Uh, you just you're, because I went to two different neurologists, and one says absolutely do it, try it. Apparently, there's new studies that THC shrinks it. Then the other neurologist says absolutely not; it'll cause seizures. So now I'm stuck in the middle. Do I try it? Do I take a or not? So the, the reality right now is we don't know, does CBD oil, one, do anything to treat seizures, which would be one of the reasons that you would be trying it, and two, does it do anything to treat the cancer? So we don't have the answer to either of those questions. There is a study that suggested um, that maybe there's a use for CBD oil for dogs with seizures, but the, the, the answer there was more studies are needed and those studies are, are happening. So right now we don't have the ability to say, is there a positive or is there a negative? You know, for, for me, lots of people come to me saying, you know, well, gosh, I don't wanna give drugs, I wanna give something natural. And, and in my opinion, you know, it's still a drug. It's still a chemical that we're giving or that we're taking into the body to affect a, um, or to cause an effect or hopefully cause an effect. Uh, basically that's what a drug is. It's just, you know, this has been marketed as, as not a drug. So, but the short answer is, you know, right now we just, we just don't know. There isn't enough evidence to say, yes, there's a positive or is it even safe? So is it safe? Is it effective? Et cetera. What's the appropriate dose? We don't know any of those things. I'm not the type, you know, that just, hey, anything that isn't Western medicine, you know, has no value. I, I'm not that of that opinion. Um, so in the future, I might be prescribing CBD oil to all of my patients with pain and all of my patients with seizures, or maybe even just a subcategory of dogs with seizures or dogs with tumors, et cetera. So, but the reality in, in my approach is right now, people come to me to saying, hey, Dr. Wong, I trust you. You went to school for a long time. 
give me the Cliff Notes version on all of those studies that you read of what's best for my dog. And right now there just aren't those studies for me to be reading for me to be able to give a pet parent a, a good advice on it. Your glioma patients, do they go through chemo? Is it beneficial? Is it? Our, our glioma patients, you know, we kind of offer a couple different options. If it is readily surgically accessible, um, occasionally at Southeast Veterinary Neurology, we'll do glioma surgery, but just because glioma surgery is just much less common than other sorts of brain tumors that we treat surgically, Usually, if we're going to do something surgical, we're, we're sending up to the University of Minnesota. Um, so for people that don't want to go, uh, that don't want to travel, we do offer consultation with an oncologist here in town. 99% of them are getting radiation um, without the temozolomide. Yeah, I, I actually spoke to, uh, I don't know how to say her name, Dr. Elizabeth over there at um, Minnesota. Dr. P, I don't want to say her last name. I apologize. Uhar. There you go. Yeah, I spoke to her, and I guess, you know, unfortunately, she said the only ones who don't do well are these French bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, and, and she she's the guru on it. Um, oh, boy. Maybe there'll be some. I, I really, really would love to donate her brain to science because I feel like there's not a lot of, you know, and, and it's, like, more common now with these brain tumors. Yeah, we certainly see a lot more brain tumors than we used to, and we certainly see a lot more French bulldogs than we used to. So um, they're, un unfortunately for all of their good characteristics, they get a lot of neurological problems like slip discs, they get ear infections that can cause balance problems, they get brain tumors at a relatively young age, they get meningitis. So uh, it's something that, you know, just so few people know about and they see, you know, if you see a French bulldog puppy, all, all, all you want to do is take it home. So now, okay. One last stupid question. How, like, I, this is what I'm trying to prepare myself for because I'm so new to this. When it's near the end, obviously, like what will happen? Will she just nonstop seize or like, I don't know what to look for. That, that, I'm so nervous for that. Sure. Th that's also impossible for me to know exactly what's going to happen with her. So the things that happen, the, the reasons that I lose my patients with brain tumors would either be that they do start having more seizures. Um, and is it a function that, you know, every week they're having a cluster of seizures and despite adjusting medications, they're just having so many seizures that that pet owner is going to the emergency clinic over and over and it just says, hey, it's time. So I, I lose my, my patients because of recurrent or progressive seizures. I also lose them just because over time their personality can change. So a brain tumor as it starts affecting other parts of the brain might just cause her to not be able to recognize you. It might start walking in circles or acting like a zombie or things like that. And those are things that many times um, by adjusting the prednisone, we can make those better for a, a period of time, but eventually those symptoms get worse. So that's kind of the second way that I lose my, my patients is just that the symptoms progress and the behavior changes, et cetera. Very, very rarely, but it does happen, do the patients just pass away, you know, whether they go into a seizure and don't come out of it, um, or whether they just go to bed one night and don't wake up in the morning. Um, occasionally that happens, but more commonly what happens is, you know, the, the pet parent just has to make that tough decision of, hey, the, the bad days are outnumbering the good and it's time. Uh -oh. That's terrible. So young, it's so unfortunate. Yep. Uh, you said she's five? Yeah, she just turned five. All right, well, thank you. You're so welcome. Much for all your help and thank you for all the questions that you answered. Sure. No, I, I can tell you're very, very attached to her and you're you're doing so much for her. The you know, meeting with a, a neurologist, getting an MRI, doing RT, getting fourth opinions and you know, whatnot. So um, you know, hats off to you. She's lucky to to have someone like you. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thank you. Have a nice holiday weekend. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, doctor.